Hey everybody, final thoughts, time for Helionox Chronicles. But before I get to that, please remember this is a paid Kickstarter preview. And with that out of the way, I've been a fan of Helionox for years. I covered it when it was on Kickstarter, geez, probably over half a decade ago now, when it was a competitive deck builder. It came in a little tiny box. You had to buy two copies of it to be able to play a four-player game. Otherwise, with a single copy, you could only play a solo or a two-player game. And I've always thought it was very, very sharp. At its heart, uh, uh, a quick and efficient and fast-moving deck builder that gives you a little bit more control than most because you can decide whether to hold cards over from one round to the next. When you buy cards, they go to the top of your deck instead of to a discard pile, so you're going to get them pretty quickly. And... Um, um, it was one of the first deck builders. That it's much more common these days. But back then, it was really rare to see a deck builder that combined deck building with an actual board uh, world traversal that you moved around on and dealt with things. And I always thought it was very clever. And I always thought it was kind of weird that it was a competitive game where we were competing to be the best in the future to save humanity rather than cooperating. And I'm very happy to see that all these years later, they have finally come up with Chronicles, which is, a at its heart, a cooperative or a social solo experience. And I can say it definitely works well both ways. Um, I played it solo. I played it two-player with my wife. And uh, the core gameplay that's always worked well here, you know, those tough choices of, hey, I don't get to do that much in the game. I forget, the original game, I think maybe you had 16 or 18 rounds. This game, it's a little bit more variable. You have four eras, at least in everything I've seen. Maybe there's some settings where there's more eras. Uh, you have four eras, and in each era, basically an era is... If you think of it in Dominion terms, it's one hand of cards. At the beginning of the era, you draw your five cards. When you eventually run out of cards and you've run out of stuff to do, you go on ahead and pass and you move on to the next era. So that may sound like, wow, you got, how could you do anything? What could you do in a game of Dominion where you only play four rounds um, you know, or four hands of cards? Well, let me tell you. A lot because of all the smart choices you have to make about harvesting resources that let you move around to interact with different areas, to um, buy cards and put them directly into your hand instead of on the top of the deck, or to um, draw cards faster, or to um, trigger all kinds of other benefits. But if you're spending your limited resources doing that, you're not doing what you need to do, which is go and fight all the events. Because if you leave those be, your opponent, the the um, wh whichever dark shadowy forces that you're going up against, because the game comes with several different ones, depending on which mission you're playing, um, you know, they are just going to hoover up all the points, and it can be terrifying, and you can fall behind the eight ball. So, it's really a clever game of trying to balance, where am I going to focus on the most? How much time am I going to spend deck building, which means I'm putting um, event fighting off, versus event fighting, keeping the bad guy down, but not scoring very many points for myself. And um, it's really sharp. Now, I can say, having played it both as a solo and a two-player game, personally, I think I like it better as a solo game. Although, I should point out, it's not that this game does not work as a co-op. It just has a different feel when you're playing with other players. Specifically because when I play by myself, I get to do three un uninterrupted actions in a row. Because I have three dice in a solo game. Whereas, when I'm playing with you... I do a single action, then you do a single action. Then I do a single action, then you do a single action. Then the bosses do an action. And then I do an action, you do an action, and boom! I get to do a big action. Because a lot of the actions you will take in this game with the die, because you're trying to get in the right place, you're trying to get the right collection of resources, um, Jen and I, we, uh, we often refer to them as like, they're baby steps. They're, a baby step game for us is one where you take a lot of little intermittent step turns um, that ultimately build up to a really big payday and it feels really good when that comes along. Like, Ticket to Ride is really the perfect example of this. You spend turn after turn after turn just getting a ticket, getting a ticket, getting a ticket, getting a two tickets. Oh, that's the wrong ticket. Oh, I can't get the ticket. And then boom! You lay out a really big, and it feels great, and then you go back to more little build up, build up, build up steps. And that's kind of what the multiplayer here feels like. Uh, because on my turn, even though I've got two dice and I can do two actions, I'm only going to do one of them. And that works. And again, there are so many examples of incredibly popular games where that is the core overall structure. But having played this solo now, I find it personally a bit more engaging when I get... When I basically take fewer turns that are bigger and more elaborate. I personally find it more interesting to say, okay, you know, I, I'll take this one, and then, okay, now give me a few things, and then I can do this one. Boom! And okay, now what are you going to do? And then you do a big, boom! And then, okay, the boss jumps in. And then we go back in. 
I think, I can't really see that that would actually change the balance of this game at all, really. It would still pretty much play the same. It just means uh, I would take fewer turns that are bigger and more impactful. And I think, for me and Jen, that would make it a little bit more engaging. And I, I kind of know that because I enjoyed it uh, more as the solo game. And hey, some late breaking news. I just heard from the designer publisher of the game, Taryn. Uh, he saw my original version of these final thoughts and agreed that it should work to change the structure in that tiny, tiny way so that on my turn, I get to activate all of my dice rather than just doing them one after another after another over several rounds. And they're going to be doing some playtesting on that to see if it works. And I'm even more excited. They're potentially going to look at an advanced uh, variant for really experienced players that allows completely simultaneous play, which I have to admit, I'm even more excited about. Um, uh, you know, Spirit Island is a very popular cooperative game that uh, gets a lot of great mileage out of true simultaneous decision making. And more recently, Stars of Akarios did it too, and I loved it there. So, folks, I am very, very excited about the future for Helinox Chronicles. And I imagine there'll be more talk about this on the uh, crowdfunding page as the uh, campaign progresses. You can hit that I in the top right corner of the screen to go uh, sign up to make sure you get the latest updates and all of that. But okay, now, where was I? I should say, this game works great as a cooperative game. There's definitely opportunities for players to work with each other. Um, like one of the things, if multiple players are in the same location um, and I thaw, I can thaw myself or I can thaw you. So there are ways, um, you know, the uh, archivist becomes a thing that, hey, if we both come over here and use the archivist, we can hit the big bad without having to spend any resources. So there are opportunities for us to collude. There are also opportunities for, um, you know, especially, I've only played as a two-player game, at a higher player count game where you have to do three three or even four defense to take one of these out. The interesting thing is, hey, I could go over there and I'll just do the first two defense and somebody else can go over there and do the other four. Um, so I, at higher player count games, I think there's going to be even more opportunities for us to coordinate with each other to finish these things off because you have much bigger targets you have to hit and any one player can't hit them all by themselves. So, there's definitely opportunities for collusion, there's definitely fun uh, choices, and there's definitely still that feel of a deck builder where, wow, I get to do so much stuff with just a few cards. But drip-fed over several successive rounds. You know, that's really the one thing I'm looking for. Um, you know, give me the big, uh, give me fewer big turns instead of more small building up towards big turns. And that's really my only complaint. I love the art. I Also, I should say, by the way, I love the storytelling. If you get this game, please be careful. At, when you are reading the section for the next chapter you're going to go to, if you read the entire section for the chapter, you will spoil big things for yourself. You do not... I mean, there are some surprising moments in the narrative of this game. Don't get me wrong, this is not a really deep, rich narrative with a lot of characters and character growth and uh, you know a three-act structure and all that, but there are big moments. Like, Pandemic Legacy Season 1 moments in this game's narrative. And if you're just reading, say, okay, I just need to know how all the rules work. When it gets to the point where it's saying, hey, in this mission, there's in this particular scenario, there's going to be a specific moment. Um, you put a card in and, um, and then don't keep reading. Because if you keep reading, it'll say what that card is going to do. And it'll spoil some big moments. Don't let it happen to you because there's some very cool moments. Now, all that said, I know there's a lot of people out there who hate having narrative campaigns in their Euro deck builder cooperative games. They just want to sit down and play. Don't worry, folks. If that's the type of player you are, you can totally do that. You can just completely ignore the campaign. Go straight to, I think it's called the endless play mode. Just open, open up everything, get all the cards in all their decks, and then just set up for endless play mode. And you can skip the story. And that's fine. Me, I like story. Especially when it's a story that makes my jaw drop every once in a while. It's like, wow! That's a big moment. What's the next chapter in this campaign going to be like? And often you don't get that. Here you do. So, that was another thing I really, really appreciate. There's a lot I love here. And with a couple of tweaks, I think they could really go to the next level. Um, but even still, folks, had a great, great time with my time in Helionox Chronicles. And that is the preview, folks. Thanks very much for watching. Have a very nice day. You can hit that eye in the top right corner of the screen or follow the links in the show notes to go to the crowdfunding page. Talk to you later. So long. Uh, bye bye.